Hi guys, and thank you for visiting MyTurtleStore.com. We are the USA's largest supplier of turtles and tortoises and their supplies ship straight to your door. Now today's video, I'm going to be going over the habitat for a marginated tortoise. This little guy right here. Now right here we have the Zoomed tortoise box. Uh, it's really, really nice. Uh, the wood is definitely more beneficial than an aquarium. I definitely don't recommend putting a tortoise in an aquarium because they don't really see the sides and they think that they can get out uh, and they bash up against the glass quite often. Plus the wood is a better insulator. These are nice too because you can separate uh, into one habitat or you can actually add a habitat onto this. So I'm going to be going over the different aspects and key things for this habitat and what you should be looking for when setting it up for your marginated as well. So the bedding is the first and most crucial thing. Um, baby tortoises definitely need humidity. Um, they need some kind of moisture. Uh, I know a lot of people think that because they're a desert tortoise or that they don't need it. But what I use is the cypress mulch. And what I like about this is it's a little bit more finely cut, uh, finely crushed up than like your repta bark, which can be a little bit more chunkier, a little bit more irritating for them to walk onto. Uh, but in the main area where he crawls around over here, uh, I leave it just enough to kind of cover the top of the wood. Uh, and then next, over here, I do it real thick because this is where he likes to burrow. So when it comes to the next important part, of course, is water. Uh, so when it comes to a water dish, I recommend, especially for the little guys like this, something that they can crawl into enough and get a drink, but shallow enough so they're not going to have a problem crawling in or crawling out of it and potentially maybe causing them to flip. Uh, so that's why I like this. It's a low profile. It has a lot of surface area so they can move in and out of it freely without a problem. So I like to kind of push mine down into the mulch and that way it creates less of a problem with tipping. When it comes to adding water, now you always want to use a Reptisafe dechlorinator. Uh, it also has calcium in it as well. It's not a main source of calcium, but it definitely helps. And I recommend that you change it daily and any time that you see that it being it's soiled uh, anytime there's uneaten food in there for some reason anytime there's any kind of waste you definitely want to change it because these guys water is the most important part as well as for water for us so next it comes to the feeding now there's a couple of different ways that you can do this if you're looking for more of a natural type of look you can use a piece of slate rock um, but the only problem is you never know where you're going to find them, uh, and I definitely recommend boiling them, and that's what I've done with this. Uh, I have two feeding platforms in here. Uh, the next one is this one. Now, when you crush up the salads or the pellets, and I'll go over the pellets in just a second, but you definitely want it finely crushed or ripped because these tortoises are small, and just like any other babies, they need their food break and broken up for them. These guys, they can rip and tear um, but it's best just to kind of not chance it and rip it up small for them. Uh, next, you can coat it with a calcium powder or a vitamin powder or even a liquid. Uh, so they offer a liquid calcium supplement. You just spray on there. Next, they offer a calcium supplement. And this, you pretty much just shake on there and it does the rest. That's what all this white residue is on there. Uh, and next is an actual multivitamin which is just like that. It's in a powder form as well, and you can use it the same way. So next, I know people are asking, you know, what about pellets and everything like that? Now there's a couple different pellets that we offer. Um, we do offer a bigger pellet, and these are nice. Uh, we have these right on this for sale in the store. Uh, I will put a link down below. Um, but these are nice because yes, they look huge, but you really only have to feed one or two of them at a shot to these guys. And all you do is you put it in warm water, a couple drops on it, and it pretty much expands and turns into a softer pellet uh, that they chew right into. Uh, if you're still worried about that, <clears throat> we have this one right here. You can do pellets like this. Uh, it's more of a small tortoise diet, so it won't work so well for your big guys. Um, but what I do like about this is it is a smaller granule. And that way, same thing with this, you just put in warm water, it expands and kind of turns into almost like a thick pudding consistency and then they can basically chomp onto it that way as well. 
So when it comes to the bedding, like I said, the important part is having the right bedding, but also when to change it is the also the other crucial part. Now anything animal wise, you always want to remove soilings, poop, anything like that, almost immediately when you can find it. Uh, that way it kind of extends the life of the bedding. Um, but with bedding like this, I recommend doing it every month, just changing it out. Um, and that way you keep the safest, nicest habitat that you can for your tortoise. Uh, so like I said, once a month, definitely you want to clean it out. Uh, next would be hiding spots. Now there's multiple ways that you can do hiding spots. You can do plants like this. You can still do plants like this to make it more of a natural habitat looking, uh, hide some things, hide corners, anything like that. But the most crucial thing is the log. Now, remember, these guys are babies, and there's a passage right here so they can come through. These guys are babies, so in the natural environment, these guys can be swooped down on by anything or anyone that's basically trying to get them. Uh, so they want to feel safe. They like to burrow, especially with Johan right here. Uh, he is pretty much burrowed every night underneath the log in the moss, and that way, you know, he feels safe, he feels secure. Uh, and nothing's a problem for them. So that's definitely one thing you want to keep in mind. You can provide multiple hiding spots, and that's why I said I do a thicker layer of the mulch over here. That way it's something he can burrow into and feel safe and secure in. Uh, and that way it's a cooling area as well when it comes to lighting. So, <clears throat> like I said, these are some crucial areas. There's also some other things that you can add to the habitat. I have the tortoise block right here. And this thing is really cool because it has calcium basically mixed around uh, carrots and cactus and alfalfa hay inside. Uh, so I broke the corner so you can see what's inside of it. Uh, and that way it gives them something to chew for when it comes to their habitat and trimming their beak and everything like that. Uh, so when it comes to lighting, like I said, lighting is definitely crucial because it's what helps keep your tortoise warm. It helps them with different things with calcium. So it's definitely crucial. Uh, so when it comes to UVB, basically it helps synthesize vitamin D3, and then vitamin D3 actually helps to absorb calcium, uh, which is crucial. So another thing I like about this tortoise habitat right here is that it has an open top. So not only being wood, it's a good insulator, but you want ventilation as well, uh, especially for any of the tortoises out there. You don't want any stagnant air or anything like that. So this part closes, which is nice, and creates a dark area for the tortoise to feel safe in. And this area, you can put the lights. Now the lights, like I said, there's two of them that you definitely want. And you have your basking and then your UVA, UVB lights that you want to use. Um, you want this one on at all times. This is what creates that basking area of uh, 90 to 95 degrees for a marginated uh, and then you want a cooler area, which is in here, so he can get away from it. Uh, and then also you have your UVB lights. Uh, you can use compact compact versions like this, or you can actually use the fluorescent tubes as well. Uh, but what's nice about this is I recommend if you are going to use the compacts uh, that you use the deep dome. Now this dome is a little bit deeper uh, than your normal ones because you want it directed towards a certain area. So you can put it off to a corner. You can put it in the middle if you want, um, but I definitely recommend putting it in one area so that way they can go to warm up uh, and that way they don't have a problem there either. Uh, also, if you are concerned with cleaning the habitat or anything like that, um, there's also different things that you can use that are all natural. Uh, they break down with an enzyme and that way you can use it to clean the habitat and not have to worry about any harsh chemicals when it comes to cleaning your tortoise's habitat. Next, when it comes to the basking lamp, like I said, there's a couple different ones out there too. There's also this basking lamp that's a daylight. Um, you want to make sure that you are getting the adequate lighting requirements and the heat requirements. Uh, so you definitely want to keep in mind the outside room temperature and what temperature you're trying to basically get inside the habitat. Uh, and that will tell you what, you what bulb size you really need to get when it comes to the wattage. Next, if you're having a problem finding information uh, the internet is full of it, but unfortunately with the internet, anybody and everybody can basically write whatever they want. Uh, so what I recommend is a book that we have. It is a tortoise's, a beginner's guide to tortoise care. 
Uh, now this is going to go over diet, this is going to go over bedding, breeding, anything that you'd want to know about a tortoise, it's going to go over, has different cool photos, habitat setups, different types of tortoises, and it can really introduce you to a whole new world that you didn't even know was out there. Uh, there's also different things that they can eat and can eat for toxic plants. Uh, and it's really nice to have the pictures because trust me, anybody can say a type of leaf, but if you don't know what that leaf or flower looks like, then it's a problem. Uh, and this goes over the different leaves and lettuces that they can have and can't have, uh, and some that they should have within moderation, what can be dangerous to them, what adequate lighting that they need, uh, different things with calcium, egg incubation, weighing them, temperature control, so much more in hibernation. Uh, hibernation is another key thing when it comes to tortoises, so it helps you basically educate yourself about that. I recommend reading that book front to back. So I'll put links to all this stuff down below so you can check it out. Um, like I said, it's very, very crucial to have the most well set up habitat that you can supply for your tortoise um, because a healthier habitat equals a healthier tortoise. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you for visiting myturtlestore.com. Make sure to check out the rest of our stores and items that we have for sale for your turtle and tortoise's needs.